What is up, everybody? How we doing? So, we're going to do Richard uh, Allen's probable cause affidavit for you guys today. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read to you guys. So, this is just uh, the court having a matter advised. This is telling us that it's getting released is what those are. It's a 12-page document. Here's the charges. Charging them with count one of, mur of mur murder. Two counts of felony murder. I mean, it's murder is a felony in that state. So, again, that's that. Um, let me get down here. I understand. Probable cause affidavit. So, I, I hear it say the statements of the witness contained here in rival and credible due to the witness's person. So, that the hearsay statements of the witnesses contained herein are considered reliable and credible due to the witness's personal knowledge and are corroborated by the totality of the circumstances. Okay. Then on February 14, 2017, victim one and two uh, were found deceased in the woods, approximately 0.2 miles northeast of the Monon High Bridge in Carroll County. Their bodies were located in the north side of Deer Creek. At the time, the Mona on High Bridge Trail was an approximately one mile gravel trail terminating at the Mona on High Bridge. The Mona on High Bridge is an abandoned railroad trestle, approximately a quarter mile long, span, a, a 0.25 mile long, spanning the Deer Creek and Deer Creek Valley on the southeast end of the trail, approximately 0.7 miles northwest on the trail from the northwestern edge. Of the Monon High Bridge is the Freedom Bridge, which is a pedestrian bridge spanning State Road 25, approximately 350 feet west of Freedom Bridge, was a former railroad overpass over Old State Road 25, also known as County Road 300 North. The trail terminates just west of the former railroad overpass. The majority of the trail is in the wooded area with a steep embankment on the south side of the trail. The entirety of the trail and the location of the girls' bodies were and are located in Carroll County, Indiana. Through interviews, reviews of electronic records, and review of video at the Hoosier Harvest Store, investigators believe victim 1 and victim 2 were dropped off a cross from the Mears Farm at 1.49 p.m. on February 13, 2017, by Redacted. The Mears Farm is located on the north side of County Road 300 North, near an entrance to the trails. A video from Victim 2's phone shows that at 2.13 p.m., Victim 1 Victim 1 and Victim 2 encountered a male subject on the southeast portion of the Monon High Bridge. The male ordered the girls, guys, down the hill. No witnesses saw them after this time. No outgoing communications were found on Victim 2's phone after this time. Their bodies were discovered on February 14, 2017. The video recovered from Victim 2's phone shows Victim 1 walking southeast on the Monon High Bridge while a male subject wearing a dark jacket and jeans walks behind her. <laughs> As the male subject approaches Victim 1 and Victim 2, one of the victims mentions, Gun. Near the end of the video, a male is seen and heard telling the girls, Guys, down the hill. The girls then begin to proceed down the hill. And the video ends. A still photograph taken from the video. And the guys down the hill audio was subsequently released to the public to assist investigators in identifying the male. Victim 1 and Victim 2's deaths were ruled as homicides. Clothes were found in Deer Creek belonging to Victim 1 and Victim 2 south of where their bodies were located. There was also a 40 caliber unspent round less than two feet away from victim two. One second, guys.
uh, hybrid self interference. They were walking the trail toward Freedom Bridge to go home when they encountered a male walking from Freedom Bridge toward the Mona on High Bridge. Redacted. This yeah, how may I help you? Uh, so describe uh, describe the male as kind of creepy, kind of creepy, and advised that he was wearing like blue jeans and like really light blue jean jacket, and his hair was gray, maybe a little brown, and he did not really show his face. She advised the jacket. She advised the jacket was a duck canvas type jacket. Redacted advice, she said hi to the male, but he just glared at them. She recalled him being in all black and had something covering his mouth. She described him as not very tall with a bigger build. She said he was not bigger than 5'10". Redacted advised, he was wearing a black hoodie, black jeans, and black boots. She stated he had his hands in his pockets. Redacted showed investigators photographs she took on her phone. While she was on the trails that day, the photograph include a photo of the Mount on High Bridge, taken at twelve forty three p.m. Another one taken at one twenty six p.m. of the bench east of the Freedom Bridge. Redacted advised after she took the photo of the bench, they started walking back toward Freedom Bridge. She advised that was when they encountered the man who matched the description of the photograph taken from Victim 2's video. Redacted described the man she encountered on the trail as wearing a blue or black windbreaker jacket. She advised the jacket had a collar and he had his hood up from the clothing underneath his jacket. She advised he was wearing baggy jeans and was taller than her. She advised her head came up to approximately his shoulder. Uh, Shoulder. She advised she did not get a good look at his face, but believed him to be a white male. The girls advised after encountering the male, they continued. The girls advised after encountering the male, they continued their walk across Freedom Bridge and the old railroad bridge over Old Rate, Old State Route Twenty Five. <coughs> Investigators spoke with <coughs> redacted who advised she was on the trails on February 13, 2017. Video from the Hoosier Harvest Store captured Redacted's vehicle traveling eastbound at 1.46 p.m. toward the entrance across from the Mears Farm. Redacted advised she saw four juvenile females walking on the high bridge over Old State Road 25 as she was driving underneath on a her way to park. Redacted advised there were no other cars parked across from the Mears farm when she parked. She advised she walked to the Moon on High Bridge and observed a male matching the one from Victim 2's video. She described the male she saw as a white male wearing blue jeans and a blue jean jacket. She advised he was standing on the first platform of the Moon on High Bridge, approximately 50 feet from her. She advised she turned around at the bridge and continued her walk. She advised approximately uh, halfway between the bridge and the parking area across from Mears Farm, she passed two girls walking toward Monon High Bridge. She advised she believed the girls were victim one and victim two. Video from the Hoosier Harvest Store shows at 1.49 p.m. a white car matching Redacted's vehicle traveling away from the entrance across from the Mears farm. We're back on the vibe to finish her walk and saw no other adults other than the male on the bridge. Her vehicle is seen on Hoosier Harvest Store video at 2.14 p.m. leaving westbound from the trails. Redacted advised when she was leaving, she noted a vehicle was parked in an odd manner at the old CPS building. She said it was not odd for vehicles to be parked there, but she noticed it was odd because of the manner it was parked. 
back in near the building. Investigators received a tip from Blank in which he stated he was on his way to Delphi on State Road 25 around 210, February 13, 2017. He observed a purple PT cruiser or small SUV type vehicle park on the south side of the old CPS building. He stated it appeared as though it was backed in as the concealed license plate of the vehicle. Redacted, both drew diagrams of where they saw the vehicle parked and their diagrams generally match as to the area the vehicle was parked and the manner in which it was parked. Redacted advised he remembered seeing a smaller dark colored car parked at the old CPS building. He described it as possibly being a smart car. Redacted vehicle is seen leaving at 2.28 p.m. on the Hoosier Harvester video. Investigators spoke with Redacted, who stated that she was traveling east on 300 North on February 13, 2022, and observed a male subject walking west on the north side of 300 North away from the Moan on High Bridge. Redacted advised that the male subject was wearing a blue colored jacket and blue jeans and was muddy and bloody. She further stated that it appeared he had gotten into a fight. Investigators were able to determine from which, from watching the video from the Hoosier Harvest Store, that Redacted was traveling on County Road 3 North at approximately 3.57 p.m. Through interviews, electronic data, photographs, and video from the Hoosier Harvest Store, investigators determined that there were other people on the trail that day after 2.13 p.m. Those people were interviewed, and none of those individuals encountered the male subject referenced above, witnessed by the juvenile girls. Redacted and redacted. Furthermore, none of those individuals witnessed victim one and victim two. That's crazy. I don't know if you've noticed that. There's Richard's tip of them talking to Richard in 2017. Mr. Allen was on the trial between 1.30 and 3.30. He parked at the old Farm Bureau building, I think it would be the old CBI, and walked to the new Freedom Bridge. While at the Freedom Bridge, he saw three females. He noted one was taller, had brown or black hair. He didn't remember the description, nor did he speak with them, nor did he care. Supposedly. So, again... You know, I, it's supposedly. Investors we believe Mr. Allen is referring to the child protective building. Um, investigators believe the females he saw included blank and blank due to the time they were leaving the trail. The time he reported getting to the trail and descriptions the three females gave. Investigators discovered Richard Allen owned two vehicles in 2017. A 2016 Black Ford Focus and a 2006 Gray Ford 500. Investigators observed a vehicle that resembled Allen's 2016 Ford Focus on the Hoosier Harvester video at 1.27 p.m., traveling westbound on County Road 300 North in front of a Hoosier Harvester, which coincided with his statement that he arrived around 1.30 p.m. at the trails. Um, the trails. Investigators note, Witnesses described the vehicle parked at the former Child Protective Service building as a PT Cruiser, small SUV, or smart car. Investigators believe those descriptions are similar in nature with the 2016 Ford Focus. On October 13, 2022, Richard Allen was interviewed again by investigators. He advised he was on the trails February 13, 2017. 2017, he stated he saw juvenile girls on the trails east of the Freedom Bridge and that he went onto the Moan on High Bridge. Richard Allen further stated uh, he went out onto the Moan on High Bridge to watch the fish. Later in his statement, he said he walked out to the first platform on the bridge. He stated he then walked back 
sat on a bench on the trail, and then left. He stated he parked his car on the side of an old building. He told investigators that he was wearing blue jeans and a blue or a black Carhartt jacket with a hood. He advised he may have been wearing some type of head covering as well. He further claimed he saw no one else except for the juvenile girls he saw east of the Freedom Bridge. He told investigators that he owns firearms and they are at his home. Richard's wife, Kathy Allen, also spoke to investigators. She confirmed that Richard did have guns and knives at the residence. She also stated that Richard still owns a blue car, heart jacket. On October 13, 2022, investigators executed a search warrant of Richard Allen's residence at 1967 North Whiteman Drive, Delphi, Carroll County, Indiana. Among other items, officers located jackets, boots, knives, and firearms, including a Sig Sauer Model P226 40 caliber pistol with serial number U625627. Between October 14, 2022 and October 19, 2022, the Indiana State Police Laboratory performed an analysis on Allen Sig Sauer uh, Model P226. The laboratory performed a physical examination and classification of the firearm function test, barrel and overall length measurement, test firing, ammunition component characterization, microscopic comparison, and NIBIN. The laboratory determined the unspent round located within two feet of victim two's body had been cycled through Richard's Sig Sauer 226. What? I don't know how you can do that. I mean, even if it was a remade bullet, I mean, you can't, like, I don't think it would have the exact same identifying marks. An identification opinion is reached when the evidence exhibits an agreement of class characteristics and a sufficient agreement of individual marks. Sufficient agreement is related to the significant duplication of random straight impression marks as evidenced by the correspondence of a pattern or a combination of patterns of surface contours. Because you have to shoot a bullet for it to get that on on it to get that. So again, like what they're doing is the casing's the same, like the, the, the charge, the casing. This doesn't make sense, man. You can't test an unspent casing. Investigators then ran the firearm and found that the firearm was purchased by Richard Allen in 2001. Richard Allen voluntary, voluntarily came to the Indiana State Police Post on October 25th. He spoke with investigators and stated that he never allowed anyone to use or borrow the Sig Sauer Model P226 firearm. When asked about the unspent bullet, he did not have an explanation of why the bullet was found between the bodies of victim one and victim two. He again admitted that he was on the trails, but denied knowing victim one or victim two and denied any involvement in the murders. Carroll County Sheriff's Department Detective Blunt has been part of the investigation since the start in 2017. He has had an opportunity to review and examine evidence gathered in this investigation. Detective, hmm, along with other investigators, believe the evidence gathered shows that Richard Allen is the male subject seen on the video from victim Toon's phone who forced the victims down the hill. Further, that the victims were forced down the hill by Richard Allen and led to the location where they were murdered. Huh. Through the statements and photographs of the juvenile females and the statements of blank were at the southeast edge of the trail at 12.43 p.m. east of Freedom Bridge at 1.26 p.m. and walked across the former railroad overpass over Old State Road 25 after 1.26 p.m. and before 1.46 p.m. They walked the entirety of the trail and observed only one person, an adult male. Redacted's vehicle is seen on Hoosier Harvester video at 1.46 p.m. and leaving at 2.14 p.m. And she stated she only saw one adult male. Redacted and Redacted described the male in similar manners, wearing similar clothing, leading investigators to believe all four saw the same individual. Investigators believe the male observed by blank and blank is the same male depicted in the video from victim two's phone due to the descriptions of the male by the four females matching the male in the video. Furthermore, victim two's video was taken at 2.13 p.m. and 
Redacted saw only one male while she was on the trail from approximately 1.46 p.m. to 2.14. Investigators believe Richard Allen was the male seen by Redacted and Redacted and the male seen in Victim 2's video. Richard Allen told investigators he was on the trail from 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. that day. Video from Hoosier Harvest Store shows a vehicle that matches the description of Richard Allen's vehicle passing at 1.27 p.m. toward the former CPS building. The clothing he told investigators he was wearing matched the clothing of a male in Victim 2's video in the clothing descriptions provided by Redacted and Redacted. A vehicle matching the description of his 2016 Ford Focus is seen at or around 2.10 p.m. or 2.14 p.m. and 2.28 p.m. at the former CPS building. Through his own admissions, Richard Allen walked the trails and eventually hiked to the Monon High Bridge and walked out onto the Monon High Bridge. A male subject matching Richard Allen's description was not seen on the trail after 2.13 p.m. Investigators identified other individuals on the trails or County Road in 300 North between 2.30 and 4.11 p.m. None of those individuals saw a male subject matching the description of Richard Allen on the trail. Furthermore, Richard Allen stated that he only saw three girls on the trail, who investigators believed to be blank. Investigators believe Richard Allen was not seen on the trail after 2.13 p.m. because he was in the woods with victim one and victim two. An unspent 40 caliber round between the bodies of victim one and victim two was forensically determined to have been cycled through Richard Allen's Sig Sauer Model P226. The Sig Sauer Model P226 was found at Richard Allen's residence and he admitted to owning it. Investigators were able to determine that he had owned it since 2001. Richard Allen stated he had not, that he had not, no explanation as to why the round cycle through his firearm would be at the location. Furthermore, he stated that he never allowed anyone to use or borrow the SIG. Investigators believe that after the victims were murdered, Richard Allen returned to his vehicle by walking down County Road 300 North. Investigators believe he was seen by blank walking back to his vehicle on County Road 300 North with clothes that were muddy and bloody. Redacted, along with investigators, believe the statements made by the witnesses because the statements corroborate the timeline of the death of the two victims as well as the coincide with the admissions made by Richard Allen. Further, the account relayed by Redacted and Redacted are similar in nature and time stamps on photographs taken by Redacted correspond to the times the juvenile female said they were on the trail and saw a male individual. That is the full probable cause affidavit. Well, 